Come in. Welcome. I'm E.G. Marshall. Love, said a lady named Madame de Stahl, is the whole history of a woman's life. But it's only an episode in the life of a man. Of course, she said it almost 200 years ago, and women are supposed to have changed since then. But, as another French philosopher said, the more things change, the more they remain the same. We've got the evidence, Mrs. Davis. I don't care. I'm innocent. Who is your accomplice? I don't have any. I didn't do anything. Who was with you? Don't hammer at me. I've had enough. You haven't had anything yet, Mrs. Davis. You're on your way to jail. What do you want? Information. I don't have any. Okay. Sit in jail for the rest of your life. Our mystery drama, The Giuseppe Verdi Autobus, was written especially for the Mystery Theater by Sam Dan and stars Tammy Grimes. I'll be back shortly with Act One. Travel used to be the privilege of the very wealthy. If you were poor, you stayed put. If you were rich, the in thing historical centers of Europe were hopefully they might absorb a bit of culture. This was known as the Grand Tour. Today, as befits these democratic times, it appears that everybody seems to be going somewhere. An endless number of travel agencies put together grand tours to allow ordinary, everyday folk to savor the glory that was Greece and the grandeur that was Rome. At the height of the season, they say, there are more Americans in Italy than Italians. Amici, friends, dear friends, all good members of the green bus. Il autobus verdi, verdi, green, like Giuseppe Verdi, green. You are now on your own for the lunch. And if you wish to shop, you walk that way five blocks to the Ponte Vecchio. And please, you must all be here again by two o'clock. <laughs> is that so, Mrs. Davis? Uh, uh, where is the Signora Davis? The bellissima Signora Davis! I'm here. Ah, please, please do not keep us waiting. I won't. I promise I won't. Because we must be prompt. When we reassemble, we shall go to see the Michelangelo's the David. So, remember, amici, eat a light lunch. One cannot appreciate great art on a full stomach. He's picking on you again. Gildo? Oh, I love him. He's such a lamb. <laughs> We're lucky to have such a fine tour guide, aren't we? And he just knows everything. I was wondering, Mrs. Davis, uh, do you have any plans for lunch? What did you have in mind? Oh, I don't know. I just don't care to eat alone. Won't you join me? That's hardly a flattering invitation. Oh. However, I don't like eating alone either. I didn't realize how that must have sounded. It's just that I, I'm somewhat out of practice. The truth is, so am I. Well, shall we? Certainly. Oh, my goodness. What is it? Look at that smile on Mrs. Morrison's face. Which one is she? Oh, oh, yes. She's been waiting for this ever since we arrived in Italy. Waiting for what? For you to take my arm, Mr. Wilson. Oh? You and I are the only singles on the tour. Oh. Everybody's been trying so hard to get us together. What is there about married couples? They're such confirmed matchmakers. Perhaps they want everyone to share the happiness of married life. Or the agony. Do you speak from experience? I, uh, I'm afraid so, Mrs. Davis. Uh, Mrs. Davis, is there a... Mr. Davis? There was. He died. Oh, I'm sorry. He was a wonderful man. But it's been five years now. And finally, I've decided to come out of mourning. All that time, everyone's been saying to me, life goes on. And now I realize it does. It should. It must. I see. Your marriage was happy. And yours? Well, she and I, we married too soon and we stayed with it too long. It embittered both of us. 
No, I suppose like you, in a sense, I'm coming out of mourning, too. Shall we go to lunch, Mrs. Davis? Why don't you call me Norma? I will. If you call me Charlie. How about lunch? Why don't we go into some little shop and buy a loaf of bread? Oh, uh, you mean pane. And some cheese. You mean fromage. Yeah. And a bottle of wine. You mean vino. <laughs> and stroll leisurely through Florence. <laughs> you mean Firenze. Hello, the boss of Giuseppe Verdi. Everyone here. Ah, Signora Davis. So prompt. You are here the first one. You and Mr. Wilson. You did no shopping, I see, Mrs. Davis. You can really get the same bargains at home. I didn't come all the way to Italy just to shop. Of course not. I'm sure you found far more interesting things to do. You and Mr. Wilson. Mrs. Davis, uh, one moment. Gildo, I won't be late. I'm just going up to my room for a sweater. No, no I, I only wish to say uh, I have a letter for you. Oh, thank you. It's from my sister. Only good news, I hope. I don't have to read it. I know exactly what's in it. Is that true? How? I can read Molly like a book. She's so nervous and excited. I can tell by the way she writes the address. Why is she uh, nervous and excited? She's scared stiff about my making this trip. She's nervous and excited because she's afraid I'll meet a fortune hunter who steal all my money. And have you met someone? I, uh, I may have, Gildo. I may have. Charlie, of course. I'm just finishing this letter to my sister. Are we late? No, 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 no. Of course not. Plenty of time. Don't rush. I'll be down in five minutes. He's taking me to the opera tonight, Monty. Just think, La Scala. Oh, he's so wonderful. Kind, sympathetic, and so handsome. Tall, slender, so distinguished looking. What more could I want in a man? You don't mind taking the time? Of course not. I have such a large family. I think that's wonderful. I miss that. There's just my sister, Marty, and me. Well, Marty and her husband, Paul. Do they have children? No. And I didn't either. You mean there are no aunts, uncles, cousins? No one. <laughs> I'm going to have to spend a full day buying gifts. You'll just have to help me. I'd love to. No, oh, my darling, go through this list with me and see what ideas you can come up with. Did you mean that? Of course I do. I haven't the least notion of what to buy for whom. Did you mean what you just called me? What did I just call you? Oh. Darling. Yes. Yes, I meant that. And here is the remarkable Colosseum. Not only did they have fights between gladiators and men and beasts, but it could be flooded, and there were real sea battles. Ah, if these ancient stones could only speak, what a tale they could tell us. You don't appear too impressed, darling. The truth? This is the first thing I've seen in Italy that simply doesn't make me want to say, wow. Really? If you want the truth, the Los Angeles Coliseum is bigger. So is the ballpark, Chavez Ravine. Are they? I'd say so. Yes, I would definitely say so. Well, I've never been there. Great places to see ball games. You like sports? Well, I suppose you could call me a fan. I go all the time. Football in the fall, baseball in the spring and summer. I'm afraid this wouldn't make a very good baseball park. I hope you won't let this little disappointment spoil the trip. Golly. 
This is the most wonderful thing that ever happened to me in my life. Shall I order? Oh, please let me. I want to see if I can do it in Italian. Ah, you mean Italiano, darling. <laughs> oh, be my guest. Here he comes. Um, Camerari. Ah, oh, prego. Duo cappuccino. <laughs> See him give you that nod? I'm sure he thinks you're a native. So, this is the fabulous Via Veneto. And here you are about to sip your coffee at a sidewalk cafe on one of the most famous streets in the world. It's a far cry from Dayton, Ohio. Where are all the celebrities? I'm told the place is encrusted with them. Oh, they're probably sitting all around you, strolling past you along the sidewalk. I feel so giddy. Oh, giddy? <laughs> well, so unlike myself. That is, unlike the self I've been this past five years. I feel so young, so alive. How do you account for it? Probably the air and the wine. Oh, is that all? I was hoping you'd say the company. Oh. Without the company, there'd be nothing. Charlie, I'm going to do something mad. Do you mind? No, of course not. That gentleman sitting at the next table to my left, the, the very portly one. Yeah, well, what about him? Who, who do you suppose he is? Well, I guess he could be anyone. I'm almost positive. He's a famous film director. I'm going to find out. What? Well, how? Ask him, of course. Um, sir... Hmm? Excuse me. Are you a celebrity? Well, I hope so. Back home in Sadness Corners, Montana, I'm the mayor. Oh. I'm also the chief of police, the postmaster. Oh, I, and I I, see. I'm also the druggist, the dog catcher, and the undertaker. Oh, I could tell you're a man of parts. See, you, you want to hold still a second? I'd like to snap your picture. Oh, my, my hair. I'd just like to have a shot of all the Americans I run into. Uh, hold it. There. You you and your husband enjoying the trip? Oh, um, no, we're, uh, we're not married. Well, in case you decide to dig the step, come on out to Sadler's Corners. I'm also the Justice of the Peace. My Signora Davis, you are so uh, beautiful in that lovely gown. Thank you, Gildo. I want you to have this. Oh, oh, oh no. <laughs> it is not necessary. Yes, it is. And not just because the tour brochure says it is customary to tip the guide, either. It's because, oh, Gildo, you made Italy come alive for me. Uh, that is because you were alive for Italy. See? Everyone is dressed beautiful for the farewell banquet. But uh, who is like my Belize, my Signora Davis? You don't know. What a wonderful thing happened to me on this tour, Gilda. <laughs> Although, why do I say that? I'm sure you do. I wish you so much happiness. There he is. He's talking with Mrs. Morrison. <laughs> oh, and he's giving me a signal. He wants me to come over and rescue him. Gildo, just think. We've already established private little secret signals. Perhaps you should go to it. I will. I just want to stand here for a moment and look at him. He's so tall, so straight, so good looking. Oh, I love him. Do you, Carissima? Yes, yes. I'm not a child. I'll tell you how old I am. Should you do that? I'm 41. I'm old enough not to lose my head like a, like a silly schoolgirl. Silly schoolgirls lose their heads, but why senoras lose their hearts? Then I've lost mine. Are you sure? Yes. Are you sure you have not lost your heart to Italy? I know what you mean, Gildo. It isn't the magic, the romance, the spell that this enchanted country cast on me. He'd be just as wonderful in Dayton, Ohio. Very well. As long as you are certain, then I approve. That's the third time you're sending the signal. I better go to him. Yes, darling. I'll come to your rescue. You may not know it yet, but there isn't anything in the world that I wouldn't do for you. 
isn't anything in the world I wouldn't do for you. Well, you know what a statement like that is, don't you? Quite simply, it's a blank check. But should anybody give another person the absolute right to fill in any figure he pleases? I suppose it all depends on how much you have in your emotional account. I'll be back shortly with Act Two. A very romantic lady wrote a song which goes, We've come to the end of a perfect day. Near the end of a journey, too. And memory has painted this perfect day with colors that never fade. And we find at the end of a perfect day the soul of a friend we've made. Well, we're concerned with a very romantic lady who has come to the end of a perfect day and a perfect journey and has really made a friend. Amici, all good friends of the Green Boss. Hello, to boss Giuseppe Verdi. You should have the luggage outside of your door in five minutes. And then we must leave for the airport. Charlie, darling. Ah, uh, have you closed your suitcase yet? No. You promised you'd save my life. I was able to get everyone's presents in my luggage except these. Oh, no problem, dear. Oh, you sure? Uh, are these packages too large? No, I can handle all three of them. Darling, I hate to impose. How can you use such a word? As a matter of fact, I even have more room. No, 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 this will be just fine. Now, that's my nephew Terry's present. And that's a music box for my Aunt Nell. I remember we bought that on the Isle of Capri. And in here is a sweater for my sister. I picked it out. I might just as well carry it. I can't wait to meet her. And will they be happy to meet you? And now, the bag. The nice green suitcase for my bellissima Signora Davis. Oh, thank you, Gildo. To think, this will be the last time I will check your luggage. I'll see you again, Gildo. Ah, no. But I threw my coin into the Trevi Fountain. That is nonsense for the tourists. Gildo, maybe Charlie and I, we could come back on our honeymoon. Carissima. We spoke about it. Then you shall be back. One day. Have a happy, lovely, and safe trip to the United States. Ladies and gentlemen, we have just landed in New York's John F. Kennedy Airport. The local time is 4.47 p.m. You better get on this line, darling. It looks shorter. All right. What do they do? Oh, most often nothing. The customs agent asks you if you have anything to declare. Well, I bought Monty a skirt and Paul some ties. Did it add up to $300? Oh, no. Then you don't have to declare anything. You get the first $300 free. So when he asks me if I want to declare something, then I answer no. I'll be right behind you. Charlie, do you mean you want me to come to your brother's house? You have to meet the family sometime. But so soon? Say, this line's really moving. The fellow must be in a hurry to go home. Next, please. Uh, do you have anything to declare, miss? No. Uh, did you buy anything while you were in Italy? Nothing that would add up to $300. Would you mind opening up your suitcase? For me? Yes, ma'am. But... Oh, do you object? Well, I can't imagine why you want to. Oh, I'm sure a lady like you would have nothing to worry about. I certainly do not. Where's my key? Here it is. Let me just turn the lock and... Mm -hmm. Thank you. Absolutely everything's in order. Well, what's in this package? I don't know. I'm not sure. I'm carrying it for this gentleman behind me who has no room in his valise. Did you say this was the one with the music boxes, Charlie? Charlie, where did he go? Which gentleman are you talking about, ma'am? Oh, uh, the gentleman who was, uh, was, uh... Well, I, I'm, I'm sure he'll be right back. Uh, I see. Well, uh, would you mind opening this package? Well, of course, I, uh... See? I told you it was a music box. I was with him when he bought it. Open the lid, please. Of course. That's funny. It doesn't play. It should. Well, it doesn't play, ma'am, because there are no works inside. What are those... those packets? Those cellophane packets? Well, 
alone, Mrs. Davis? Who are you? My name is Detective Lieutenant Marvin Stern. I'm with the Police Narcotics Division. Have they read you your rights? Yes, whatever that was, they did it. Now, I want you to listen. Were you permitted to call your lawyer? I don't know any lawyer in New York. I called my sister in Dayton, Ohio. Mrs. Davis, do you know what the best thing would be? Look. I can't even begin to tell you how many people have been hammering at me. I tell you the same thing I told all of them. I don't know anything. I don't know how that powder came to be hidden in my suitcase. The powder found in those three packages happens to be pure heroin. Depending on how it's cut, it could have a street value of close to a million dollars. But I don't know how I... Yes, I do know. He gave it to me to carry for him. He didn't have room in his valise. Mm, I see. Charlie. Charlie Wilson. He said... Oh, what's the use? Check with the tour. Old Heritage Tours. They'll tell you a man named Charlie Wilson was on the tour. We already have. Then you know I'm telling you the truth. A man named Charlie Wilson was on the tour. That's what I've been telling you. Mm Mm-hmm. Mr. Charles Wilson of 34 Pierman Street, Salisdale, New York. I told you that was his address. Except... There is no Mr. Charles Wilson at 34 Pierman Street, Salsdale, New York. There's no such street as Pierman Street, and there's no such town as Salsdale. Oh. Uh, Mrs. Davis, the quickest and easiest way for all concerned is for you to tell the truth. But I've told you the truth. My name is Norma Davis. <laughs> yes, that's true. I live in Dayton, Ohio. That's also true. I'm a widow. I live with my sister, Mrs. Paul Torrance. That is, we all live in my house. After my husband died... I didn't want to live alone, so it seemed like a good idea. Really, it wasn't. It isn't. I... What am I saying all this for? Mrs. Davis, we know all about you. What do you know about me? We know you work in the housewares department at Naylor's. We know... No! You don't know anything. Do you know what I think? How I feel? The last five years, do you know how lonely I've been? How frightened... How I finally gathered my courage and went away on a trip. And I had this dream of wonderful Italy. And I dreamed I fell in love. Or am I still there? And is this the dream? The nightmare? Mrs. Davis. What do you want? Are you telling me I smuggled in some some drugs? Well, the drugs were in your suitcase. It's a mistake. The customs agent was performing a routine random spot check. You opened your valise for him. You saw what was there. But I don't know how it got there. You do. Charlie asked me to carry those three packages because he didn't have room in his luggage. Charlie, he can explain. There is, there was a Mr. Charles Wilson on that tour. He's gone. There's no trace of him. We don't know who he is or where he can be found. His passport. The State Department has no record of issuing such a passport. It was obviously a forged one. Why did he do this to me? I think by now, Mrs. Davis, we've gone full circle. From here, we shall only be repeating ourselves. It's time for the truth. Why do you keep saying that? All right. I I was foolish, but it, it was such a long time. I wanted somebody. You wouldn't understand. Well, let's do it this way, Mrs. Davis. You're an amateur. What do you mean by that? An amateur in what? Crime. Professional criminals are using the services of more and more amateurs these days. I don't care anything about that. I'm innocent. Housewives are acting as messengers, use their telephones for recording beds. Please, Lieutenant. And smuggling. I mean, who would suspect a person like you, Mrs. Davis? For that matter, who would suspect anyone on a tour? I tell you... No. I... Let me tell you what you're up against. You were caught with all that junk in your possession. So don't think in terms of anything less than 15 years. If you get a strict judge, he'll write it so you serve every single day. Please don't raise your voice. I've had enough. You haven't had anything yet. You're on your way to jail. What do you want? Talk. I've already talked. Look, we don't want you. Then let me go. Maybe later. Later? When you've led us to Charlie Wilson. I don't know Charlie Wilson. (laughs) But you said he gave you those packages. I knew a man named Charlie Wilson who was charming and attentive and sweet. I met him in Italy. We walked through it hand in hand. But when the plane landed here, that Charlie Wilson was gone. And now there's another one. A different one. Mrs. Davis, you don't want to sit in jail for 15 years. Why should you? 
Why should you if you can deliver Charlie Wilson? But I don't know where... We're convinced that Charlie Wilson, whoever he is, is as high as you can take us. Now, you give us Charlie, and we move up one step. Charlie can be made to give us the guy on top of him. That's another step. I'd help you if I could. You were caught with the drugs. That's all the DA needs to prosecute. You'll go on the stand and you'll say, what? The truth. I was carrying it for a friend. <laughs> you were carrying it for a friend. Well, that's the oldest, most tired, and lamest excuse ever heard in a court of law. They won't even laugh. Well, they might pity you. Why won't anyone believe it? How can anyone believe it? A man you don't know at all? I knew him very well. After all of two weeks? How much time do you need when it's right? Well, obviously, this wasn't right. So anyhow, this man, he says to you, would you mind carrying some of my packages past customs in your luggage? Now, you claim that's what happened. Yes, that's exactly what happened. And you said, sure, okay, why not? Am I right? Yes. And the packages were already sealed and wrapped. Yes, they were. You're a grown, mature woman, Mrs. Davis. You were married once. You work in a large department store. You have some experience in the world. Now, you... You really didn't suspect anything? No, I didn't. And that's to be your story to the jury. What other story can I tell? <laughs> a better one than that. I mean, do you expect a jury to believe that any woman could be such a fool? Oh, Lieutenant, Lieutenant, you have no idea how foolish some women can be. <laughs> With that confession, we shall let her rest for a brief intermission. Let us judge her lightly, because love certainly can make a fool of any of us. Didn't the poet say, love is a folly that enchants us all? Of course he did. He should also have added, we must pay a price. But as you know, the time for paying prices occurs always in Act Three. we are told, as much time and trouble to pull down a falsehood as it does to build up a truth. Well, that's perfectly true. However, the problems occur because quite often it's rather difficult to distinguish between falsehood and truth. And so we can never be quite sure whether we should be building up or pulling down. Paul! Hello, Norma. Paul, you came here. Obviously. How is, um... Where is Marty? How is Marty? How do you think? Can you imagine what this has done to her? I'm, uh, I'm sorry. Where is Marty? Naturally home in bed. Doctor's been in. She's been sedated. She's resting calmly. I hope. Norma, how could you do a thing like this to us? Paul, I... Uh... Norma Davis of Dayton, Ohio, arrested for smuggling heroin. Paul, will you listen to me? What are you going to do? Lie about it? You were caught. It was in your suitcase. I did nothing wrong, Paul. How did that, that, that heroin, uh, whatever, get into your place? I was indiscreet, that's all. I did someone a favor. A man. Yes. I warned you. Marty warned you. You were not only seduced by an adventurer, but by a criminal as well. Paul. You were always a headstrong girl, Norma. You never listened to good advice. Can you see where it's landed you? I'm sorry I've caused Marty such grief and made her ill. You should be. And now that I've said that, get out. What? You heard me. Get out of here. <laughs> good morning. You don't look so hot. And why should you care, Lieutenant? Mrs. Davis, uh, I'm worried about you. Is that so? A guard told me about a little scene here you had with your brother-in-law a little while ago. Was he listening? Well, how could he help it? I remember a poem. I learned it at school. The wonderful one-horse shay. Oh, that uh, was by Longfellow, wasn't it? Oliver Wendell Holmes. Anyhow, one day it was in perfect working order. The next day, it just came apart. All over. That's me. A customs officer says to me, please open your suitcase, ma'am. 
and my entire world crumbles into dust. A man has made a fool of me. My reputation is destroyed. My own family practically disowns me. And to top it all off, I'll probably go to prison. Probably. How am I going to avoid it? I'm sorry. I know you're innocent. Oh, please don't say that. You're changing tactics. Hard boy will get you nowhere, so now you'll become a nice, sympathetic cop. You'll seduce me into telling the truth. Seduce? It's a, it's a figure of speech, but it amounts to the same thing. Look, I'm sorry for you, because win or lose, well, you've got a bad deal. Even if a jury would find you innocent, there'll always be people who believe you were guilty. How well I know it. And there's one consolation. From now on, you'll know who your real friends are. I wonder why I was afraid to live alone after my husband died. I married him right after we finished school. I never worked. He did everything for me. He sheltered me, protected me. I put up with so much for my sister. And it's her husband's fault. If he were really a man, he would never stand for her nonsense. He's been assistant branch manager at Spofford Federal for almost 15 years. He'll never get promoted. But now, he can justify it. And so can she. Why are you letting me ramble on like this? Oh, I told you. I think you're innocent. But I still have to get you to do one thing. And that's to uncover Charlie Wilson for me. Charlie? Mm-hmm. He's your only hope. But tell me, what... What were your plans? Plans? Yes. Well, we, um... We would be married. No, no, I, I mean your immediate plans. He gave you the stuff to carry in your valise. Your being stopped by the customs inspector was an unforeseen accident. Suppose you had just uh, sailed through customs. Where would you have gone with him? Where? Yes. To a motel. And the next morning we would have gone to his brother's house in Salisdale, New York. But since you have informed me that there is no Salisdale, New York, there's no brother either. He might have murdered you. No. Not Charlie. <laughs> Why do you say that? You were carrying a million dollars worth of heroin. Let's see, you, you were with him for almost two weeks. And all that time, did he say anything that might give you a clue? No. Well, what did you talk about? It seems we talked about... Me? Yes. Maybe that's why I was so fascinated with him. We talked about me. Well, his accent. Eastern, Southern, Midwest? No. It seemed to be the kind of speech you might hear anywhere. I told you what he looks like. I didn't know what more to tell you. I'm sure he's got a record. I know he's been fingerprinted and photographed. I, I know it's all on file somewhere. <laughs> yeah, but where? Now, look, the, the two of you were supposed to be so much in love. Please. Uh, didn't you at least take each other's picture? No. He didn't have a camera. And I don't believe in... Uh, wait. Oh, what is it? There, there is, there is a picture. Yes? Yes. We were sitting on the Via Veneto. We, um, that is, I got into a conversation with another man, a tourist, an American. And he said, let me take your picture. And he did. Okay, we're halfway home. Now, who, who was this American tourist? What's his name? I don't know his name. You don't know his... Well, then what good... But I, I do know he's the mayor of Sadler's Corners, Montana. Why, of course I remember you. We were sitting on the old Via Veneto, and I heard you remark to the gentleman sitting next to you that I was probably some big Italian film director. That's right. So the two of you decided to come out here in the valley and tell us about services, the justice of the peace. No, no, not exactly. Oh, that's not what he told me when I spoke to him just the other day. You, you spoke to him? Yes, he gave me a call. I was mighty pleased. It was so nice to hear from folks you run into in a foreign country. He, um, he called you on the telephone? Yeah, didn't he tell you? He said, you sure would like that picture I took of you. Oh. Yeah, so I sent it to him. You, uh, you sent him the picture? Well, didn't he give it to me? Ask him if he's got the negative. Uh, Your Honor, do you have the negative? The negative? Oh, Lord bless you. If I kept hold of them negatives, I wouldn't have room to live in the house. Ask him where he sent the pictures. Where did you send it? Well, I've got the address right here. Let me see now. 
Charles Wilson, Cure at General Delivery, Los Angeles, California. General Delivery, Los Angeles. Everything's all right, isn't it? You are coming out here to let me marry you, aren't you? Yes, Your Honor. If I ever get married, I'll let you marry me. Goodbye. That means there's no picture. Los Angeles. He's in Los Angeles. You can send his description to Los Angeles. Oh, do you know how big Los Angeles is? But he's there now. The photograph was sent to him only the other day. Look, I want you to think, Norma. Think. About what? About Charlie Wilson. You spent almost two weeks in his company. He must have said something that would give him away. He didn't. I can't think of anything. Somewhere. Somewhere he must have let something drop. I can't remember. Uh, we simply have to bring in Charlie Wilson. But I don't know where or how to. Look, we have got to find him. He must have said something. You've got to start with the very first thing he ever said to you. And you're going to try to recall every single conversation. That's impossible. Anna, what were the first words he ever spoke to you? He, um, he said, um... I was wondering, do you have any plans for lunch? And I said, what did you have in mind? And he answered... Well, I don't know. I just don't care to eat alone. <laughs> See? He didn't care to eat alone. From the very first, he used me. Now, you must try to recall every word. Let's get some cheese. You mean formaggio and wine? You mean vino. <laughs> and stroll through Florence. You mean Fiorenzi. That was in Florence. Then we went to Milan. And what did we talk about? Da Vinci's Last Supper and the opera at La Scala. And then in Rome, St. Peter's. No, he didn't say anything. The Spanish Steps, the Trevi Fountains, the Colosseum. I did all the talking. Then we left for Venice. And in all this time, he said nothing about himself. No. He was really awed by everything. You really can't help it. All that grandeur just overwhelms you. Actually, the only thing that didn't seem to impress him was the, um, the Colosseum. Oh, yeah? Why? Is that important? Well, I don't know. Just tell me why. Because, um... Oh. Yes? Because he's from Los Angeles. Oh, you already suspect that. We were standing there, and he said... If you want the truth, the ballpark in L.A. and the Los Angeles Coliseum are bigger. Great places to see a ball game. And I asked him, are you a sports fan? I go all the time. Football in the fall, baseball in the spring and summer. That's what he said. Okay, he goes to the ball games. In the Coliseum of Chavez Ravine, pro football, college football, major league baseball. He said he was a fan. Oh, yeah, most likely he goes and bets on the games. Does he have to go to the park to bet? Uh, I know his type. You find him in every city, at every major league ballpark. They congregate in certain sections. They bet on everything. Balls, strikes. Could you send his description to the Los Angeles police? We'll do better than that. We'll go there and have you pick him out. Yeah, this is the section where they hang out. We've got the place filled with police detectives. If you point him out, he can't get away. Come on. Do you see him? It's, um, it's difficult. Yeah, I know it's a long shot. He may be wrong. Maybe he isn't even in L.A. But it's all we have. Do you see him? Why do you keep asking? Wouldn't I tell you if... I don't know. Would you? After all, maybe you're still in love with him. Are you? No, I'm not. Not anymore. Yes. Yes, I do see him. The left aisle, third row. The seat next to the post. The man in the gray jacket and blue slacks. But he's so ordinary looking. You described him as very handsome and distinguished. I realize that. I suppose we all look different in Italy. That's Charles Wilson. He could never deny it. We could all identify him. Hey, let's walk up and you say hello to him. Hello, Charlie. Ah, uh, hoo don't you want those packages you gave me? He, he, you. Sit down, Charlie. You're not going anywhere. I want to thank you, Lieutenant, for everything. Well, I'm glad it worked out. He's got quite a record, our friend Charlie. 
Forger, smuggler, confidence operator. And heartbreaker. Oh, did he break your heart? Not too badly. Besides, what kind of question is that for a detective to ask? Oh, I was just hoping it would never happen to you again. There's no guarantee. I just have to take the chance, that's all. Hmm. Well, you're uh, free to go, you know. You mean you have no further questions to ask me? <laughs> Well, it seems to me we spent a whole week in which we did nothing but have me ask you questions. All sorts of personal questions, wouldn't you say? Yes. Would you... Would you like to spend some time asking me some questions? Yes. I think we could spend a very interesting week doing just that. they did. And I would suspect they went on even longer. Perhaps it makes a considerable amount of good sense for a lady like Norma Davis to become involved with a police detective. You must admit she has a talent for getting herself into trouble. You, on the other hand, will get into no trouble at all if you wait for me to return. First, great waves of immigrants swarmed to our shores as millions came here to find something new. And they did. The things they were seeking, freedom, equality, justice, opportunity, these were new concepts for ordinary men and women. Now, their descendants swarm back to those European shores for a visit in order to find something old. So many of the old ways and old things are also precious and worth preserving. Our cast included Tammy Grimes, Robert Dryden, Lloyd Batista, and Gilbert Mack. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. Radio Mystery Theater was sponsored in part by True Value Hardware Stores and ARM, Allergy Re